What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Episode 7 of the Ask Keto Savage Show. Real quick apology here. I am like a month behind on answering these questions. I do apologize. I'm trying to get caught up as we speak. So if you haven't had your question answered yet, do not lose faith in me. I will get there, I promise. And I'm still accepting new questions, so go ahead and submit that. I'll put a link in the description to submit those questions. And the books are still going out for free. Now, today's question it's kind of a longer one, so bear with me, but it's a good question. It's by Travis Cole. He didn't provide a social media channel to shout out to, but Travis Cole, thank you for the question. <clears throat> I'm just going to kind of bite through this one step at a time. He says, I tried keto for just over a month, and while I noticed an improvement after the first week of keto, after the first week of keto flu, but started to notice feeling drained during my workouts. I felt flat and couldn't get the kind of pumps I was having while eating carbs. I've heard many say that my performance can increase while I'm keto, and I really want to give it another try for a longer period. Did I just not give it enough time? Uh, so that's, that's kind of like part one, so I'll go ahead and address that. So, um, yeah, sometimes it, sometimes you can get to ketosis, you know, in a week. Um, sometimes it takes, you know, a month, two months, and then it gets better with every month that goes by. Like, I'm better now after having done it for two years than I was after six months because your body becomes more and more adaptive. So very possible you didn't give it enough time. Um, as far as the uh, the pumps are concerned, in regards to, to not getting good pumps while in ketosis, oftentimes you're not really fully keto adapted. And when you're still going through the keto flu adaptation period, you're not going to get very good pumps. And that's just the reality of it. You're switching your body's fuel source and you're not going to get those pumps. And it's kind of depressing, but just give it some time. Keep, keep chugging along and you'll get there. Um, a couple things that I've noticed you can do or modify to increase your pump while doing a ketogenic diet is one is hydration uh, and sodium. Um, since you don't have carbohydrates in your system, you don't have that glycogen, which holds onto that water, which basically forces that water into your muscle cells and gives you that full pump look. So to kind of counteract that, what I've had a lot of success with is using creatine. Creatine's been around for you know decades there's been so much research done on creatine that it's safe it's sound the science is there it's super cheap super easy to use and get a hold of um and since like i said you don't have that glycogen i've noticed i get much better pumps if i supplement super saturate with creatine and then that kind of forces water into my muscle cells as well so that's that's a plus um creatine monohydrate it's kind of the easy way to go you're not going to hold excess water weight with it, which is a concern. Um, I'll put a link in the description for a creatine monohydrate that I've had a lot of success with as well. It's super cheap. Um, so I would do that. Hydration, sodium, and creatine. You do those and you get fully keto depth, you should have perfectly fine pumps. Um, let's see here, what else? Uh, I was eating a caloric deficit because I was trying to cut weight. Could it have been that I was too calorie deficient? I'm 5'6", 162 pounds. Over the last 23 months, I've lost 180 pounds through diet and exercise. And while I'm extremely happy with my results as far, I want more to build more muscle and tighten up my treble areas. Um, still holding fat on my lower waist, chest, lower back, and thighs. Uh, so over the last 23 months, he's lost 180 pounds. Awesome, man. Congratulations. Keep up the good work. Um... Let's see here. You can't really spot target fat loss. That's kind of like a misconception that a lot of people, especially um, newcomers to the gym, think that you can like target fat loss in like your midsection or your thighs or lower back. You just have to increase um, fat burning all over the entire body, and then those trouble areas will decrease over time. Um, so, yeah, to answer your question there, I would just try to, you know, create an overall body recomposition and get leaner, and then those trouble areas will tighten up over time without having to train a specific area, you know. Um, sorry for the delay here. And it is it is definitely possible to build muscle while cutting, but if you, if you have, like, if you're overweight and you need to lose weight, then I just focus on cutting while building muscle, but I mean, make one a primary focus over the other, because then you can see faster, better, more efficient, effective results in a shorter period of time. Once you find a healthy body composition, 
then you could slowly build muscle while staying relatively lean. Don't try and, I mean, you can't try and like lose trouble areas and then put on a whole bunch of muscle all at the same time and expect very quick results. You kind of need to have one priority over the other. And then once you get to that composition that you're happy with, then transition into a slow quality mass gain while maintaining a lean physique, but not too lean because you do need a caloric surplus to build muscle. And that comes with some inherent fat loss or fat gain a little bit. Um, do I think keto would be good for me? Also, how exactly does bulking on keto work? Um, yes, I do think keto would be good for you. Sounds like you have the body type that would respond well to keto. How does it work during bulking? Basically, the science is pretty simple. You have a caloric surplus and you build. You Since your body's using fat as a primary fuel source, you're less likely to have that converted into adipose tissue. Um, so like in my off-season bulking period, I was able to eat a lot more fat while not gaining body fat because my body was using it as opposed to storing it. Um, so that's that's what I do there. Just to build muscle, you just have to have a caloric surplus, and you want you know your ratios to maintain the same. I probably would increase my protein ratio a little bit more in the off season, um, kind of do more of a modified keto approach. So you know, whereas a strict keto is like ten percent coming from protein, I would have more like. 25 or 30, maybe even 35 percent coming from protein in the off season. Um, that's going to slow down your fat loss a little bit, but it's going to contribute to more muscle growth. Um, let's see here. So yeah, uh, how exactly is bulking keto? Or do you notice more lean muscle mass, or do you gain more fat with this kind of bulking? So that's basically what I just kind of answered. When you're fully keto adapted, and again, the point being, being is fully keto adapted. Your body is using that fat as a fuel source. If you have excess fat to lose, body fat to lose, your body will use that. If you don't, you've reached that composition you want, like I would suggest doing before trying to do a bulk, then your body is going to get that energy and fuel from the fat you ingest. So you have to find a ratio that works well with you, maintain that keto adapted state, slowly increase your calories so that you're in a surplus so that you're able to build muscle and not get excessively overweight. Um... Thanks, I might have missed the window for a free book, but I'd still like to hear from you. You haven't missed the window. You wanted a physical book. It's going to be coming your way, man. Appreciate the question, and keep the questions coming. So thank you again. What was the name again? Travis Cole, I appreciate the question, and I'll talk to you all soon.